Okay, today we're talking about writing and graphing inequalities. Essential question, how can you use an inequality to describe a real life statement? Okay, I want you to go ahead and work on exploration one on page 28. Get a couple minutes to work on that with your groupies there. Okay. Hey, can I please have your attention back up here? So hopefully now you've come up with some questions. What were some questions? What is this? What? Wait, outside. Oh, outside. Both of you guys can go outside. Me too. I, I'm not going to deal with it in here. So, yeah. Okay, so we have, yeah, so let's talk about some of these things. First, an inequality symbol. So inequality means using these symbols right here. So we have that symbol, we have this symbol, and then we have their other ones that have these little markings under them. Okay, so if you think of like four different inequality symbols, there's actually a fifth one as well. Okay, this one says greater than. This one says less than. Okay, so now if you deal with a number line, remember on the positive end of the number line, you have the greater than symbol. On the negative end, you have the less than symbol. Remember, the less than symbol also looks like, kind of, I mean, it doesn't look like an L, but at least pointing the same direction as an L. Right? Less than. Okay, this little piece under it means or equal to. So this is less than or equal to. Okay, so either one of those, and this is greater than or equal to. The last inequality symbol, inequality means not equal, would be the not equal to sign. That one right there. Bless you. Five inequality symbols. Okay, part A, the temperature T in Sweden is at least negative 10 degrees. Okay, so I'd have my temperature has to be at least negative 10. What symbol would we put in between? Okay, so we're saying Sweden would have, so the temperature would have to be greater than or equal to. If it's at least negative 10, give me another temperature. Negative five. Could it be negative five degrees? No. Yeah. Negative five is bigger than negative ten. Yeah, negative five is bigger than negative ten. Okay, has to be at least. The least it could be is negative ten. So negative five would work. Could it be negative twelve? No. No. Okay, that's smaller. Could be. Yeah. So it could be anything bigger than negative ten. Like, could it be a hundred? Yes, it could be a hundred. Because that's at least negative 10. The least it could be is negative 10. It's like when you go to the store and you say, hey, I need at least $5 for what I want. Well, if you have $4.50, do you have enough? No. no, you need at least five. It could be anything great. I mean, if you have six, that's great, dude. You can get some, like a piece of candy or something. Like, I don't know what you get for a buck, but something. Okay. Dollar so, you can get a big box of candy. so the next piece is graphing, negative 10. We put a dot right here. Now, the question is, and this is what, who is, who's giving me this information? Is that you, Kayla? The open circle and closed circle? Yeah, so if it's at 10, negative 10, it's a closed dot, meaning negative 10 is a solution to this. If I put negative 10 in here, negative 10 is less than or equal to. It's actually equal to negative 10. So we have to include this as part of our solution. And then we have to shade over all of our other solutions. The dot means it's included. Yep. So these or equal to pieces, you have to put closed dots on when you're graphing. It means it's included in your solution. Whereas 
These are open dots because they would not be included. You'll see that in the next one. Or actually see it on some of these other ones here. Okay, so when I shade this one, which way are my answers? Are they to the right or to the left? To the right. All right. Okay, so we shade all to the right. Okay, see the elevation of Alabama, which is E, is at most 2407. That's the most it could be. Could it be 2407? Yeah. Yeah, it could be 2407. Could it be 2408? No. So it has to be less than or equal to. Yeah. So we go to about where 2407 would be, which is kind of in between 2000 and 3000, right in there. Well, it's hard to see exactly where, so we're going to estimate. About right there. Is that an open or closed circle? Closed. Which way are we shading, right or left? Left. Left. Okay, note your arrows here. This arrow is pointing which way? Left. Which way did we shade? This arrow is pointing right. Which way did we shade? Right. Please note, if your variables come first, your arrows always tell you which way to shade. As long as the variable comes first. Okay. If the variable became it came after it, if we wrote it like this, which is the same thing, notice it's pointing at E, but it wouldn't be pointing in the direction we shade. You're right. Yep. If you if you put your variable first, it will work out. Yep. Okay. Any questions there? I want you to work on exploration two. It starts on the bottom of page twenty eight, finishes on page twenty nine. Okay. Go ahead and work with your groupies there. Exploration two. So we got a good start. Let's check some of these out. First one. Write an inequality for the graph, then in words describe all the values of x and make the inequality true. So What's the inequality? Well, it's at 1 and x. What values are we dealing with? Logan, stand up. Really tall, stand up. Stand up. No, just Logan. All right, now what's on your chair? Okay. Good. Yeah, why don't you set your phone on my desk? Hey guys, I have silly rules for people to do silly things. Now, if you can handle being in my class and not having me take your phone, then, well, then we don't make any rules. If your phone is a distraction to you, then set it on your desk. Be responsible about it. Otherwise, we have to have silly things to deal with silly rules. And every time I have to deal with, like, the guys that were here, okay, and that kind of stuff, then I have to take time out of everyone else's learning. And I don't like doing that. It's ripping people off. Were you buying, were you like ordering me a pizza? Domino's. I saw Sherman do it. He tweeted it. Got it. Yeah? What were we doing? Oh, well, that's a good thing to check. Okay. But not right now, right? If you're ordering me a pizza, I might have had some forgiveness. Okay. All right. So, look, are we getting the values greater than or less than 1? Greater than 1. Can it be equal to 1? Yes. Yes. Very good. Now we describe it. Describe in words, well... All the values that are greater than or equal to 1. That's all you say. Yeah. Kind of like, like letter B. Some of you just asked me, you're like, hey, what does the open circle mean? We just talked about that, right? What does the open circle mean? Doesn't have the equal to. So this is X is greater than 1. All values that are bigger than 1 just not including one. Okay? So it's like saying, hey, my um, my stuff at the store costs a dollar one. One dollar and one penny. If you have a buck, sorry, man. You don't have enough. You're like bumming a penny from the person behind you in line. Hey, dude, you got a penny? Hey, dude, you got a penny? Hey, dude, you got a penny? Okay? All values that are greater than one. These are all values that are? Less than or equal to 1. 
And these are all values that are less than that. Okay, very good. I'll let you do some summarization a little later. Good way to study for your test with those summaries there. Okay, any questions? All right, so we've covered a bunch of what I wanted to hit on today. Just to review, page 30, take a look at it. That's your note page. These things are good to, for those of you trying to figure out how to study for your test and your quiz, these are good ways to go through and just try to recall what you did on these sections. Okay? I just said it right there. Thanks, guys. All right? Some core concepts. Here we've got our words. Here we've got an example of them. If you want to add some notes, do it. That's all we talked about today. All right? How many of you remember this from last year? Awesome. Okay, I want you to spend, spend about five minutes working on the extra practice, page 31 and 32. Okay? Is it in the student journal? It's in the student journal. 31 and 32. So it's not in the next one. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go through numbers one through four, and then we'll come back to those other. 12 is greater than or equal to 5 times a number. All right. Um, let's go with Sergi. What do you got there? Okay. Give me, give me some numbers. Help me out. 12. N. For N. So you're saying this is 12, I'm guessing, right? Okay. What's this? Okay. This? How do we write that? Five in. There you go, man. That's what you do. Okay. Thank you for your help. Number ten. Or number two is number ten. That's Logan. Logan, what do you got for number two? Okay. All right. Okay, let's go with Sarah. You get number three. That's okay. We'll go with seven. Okay. This this statement right here is kind of weird. What's the word difference mean? Minus. We're taking the difference of two things. So those two things are Q and 6. We're taking the difference of them. It's kind of weird when they say a number Q, even though that's a letter. Okay, number four. Mercedes. Any questions on those? I got all four of them. All right. all right. If you made a little mistake, that's okay. Try to learn from it. All right. Numbers five and six. Go ahead and complete those two. If you're done with those, keep going. Seven and eight. Okay. All right. Let's see where we're at. Tell whether the value is solution. So we're testing it, right? Bless you. Man, someone's allergic to something. Yay. <laughs> Kellen, what do you think for number five? Yes or no? False. How did you come up with false? Okay. Good. So you have to put that 19 in for the D. So 19 minus 7 is 12. And as Kellen says, 12 is not less than 12. It's equal to. So this is false. We just put a slash through it saying it's not equal to. That means not equal, so it's false. You can write no. 
Okay, number six. Um, X, what do you think? It's true. You put one in. You sure, X? So what you're saying is, yes, you're sure? Are you sure? Yeah, X, I'm just asking, are you sure? That's when you say, yeah, I'm sure. I did it right, man. Well, you were right. Be confident. Say, yeah. Ooh, that's right. You got it right, X. Well done. All right. So to be clear, it's correct. All right, hey, seven and eight, if you haven't done those, do them now. Okay, if you have done those, move on to the next page. I'm not going to spend too much more time on them, but this is a hoot for sure. I'm probably just going to finish with seven and eight. I agree. It is fun. Who doesn't want to fun? If you already did the other ones, you are amazing, and I am proud of you. All right. Hey, I think most people are done with these. Number seven, open or close circle. This is closed. Okay, it's closed. Mac, why is it closed? What? Why is number seven a closed circle? Yeah, it has the equal to piece. Okay, which way am I shading? To the right. Notice the arrow's pointing to the right. All the values that are bigger than three are to the right. I put negative three, though. That's wrong. Man, come on. X. X, I wasn't sure, and you didn't correct me. Come on, X. There we go. All right. Very good. That's that's more correct. More correct, Amundo. All right. Number four or number eight. We're going to put the four. I'm going to actually find the four this time. Open or closed? Closed. Left or right? Left. All numbers less than or equal to four. Okay, tell your neighbor when you'd have an open circle then. All right, Vincent, your time to shine, man. When do you have an open circle? Yeah, they don't equal. They don't have an equal sign. So like in this one, open circle at negative 1. This is number 9, page 32, and we shade that direction. Okay. I think we got it. You can. Okay. Any questions? Gillian. Yeah, so those of you that are doing this stuff, you need please don't do this. You're like this, and then you're like, whoop, boom. yeah. Okay, if that's you, stop doing that, please, and start scribbling. We like scribbles. Okay? Scribbles are math, though. Hey, you're just practicing for the next lesson, which is shading big graphs. It's awesome. Okay, thank you for pointing that out, Julian. Great question. She might be upset that she pointed out. All right, your assignment. And I'm going to go ahead and pass this out, but while I'm passing it out, you can look at it in anticipation and go, man, that looks so fun. Yeah. Okay? I know.